All right, so me and Dana especially are really excited. Uh, one of the reasons that we became friends after we met each other is we both really like this game, Star Tropics for NES. Um, uh, I well, last week really we like do it. might be an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I joked last week we were going to do it as an American game, since it's a rare Nintendo game that did not get released in Japan. It was only released in America and Europe, made by Japanese Americans working for Nintendo, living in the States. And it's kind of this weird hybrid of Dragon Warrior meets The Legend of Zelda. Uh, but it really That's works. Kind of I, I, don't know, uh, I really love it. I remember one time when Ryan was in town and he came to a Friday night dinner, we were playing this, and I texted Will Gibbons that we were playing this, and he said it was like Dada Zelda, which I thought was a great. <laughs> well, I look very, forward to that. Very accurate. Okay. So, right off the bat, this track is screwed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Right. The programming has a glitch, right? Yeah. So, and I'm still trying to get this file to Karen. So basically what happens is that the Oh it already happened. Darn it! <laughs> we should reset so that we can set it up and then and then like explain what's happening and then we can hear some context. Yeah, this is a good time to reset the game if we're gonna do it. So yeah. <laughs> Alright. Can I Okay, so set it up, then I'll hit start. Yeah, so uh, this is not uh, my work. This is Brad Smith found this. It's an old YouTube video. It's a really good one. Um, he discovered that in the initial uh, track here, the, the Pulse 2 channel has this little uh, offbeat, but up, but up, but up, but up, but up, and it cuts out partway through before the loop finishes. That's and the it's clicking this sound, right? The there's a, yeah, there's a weird like couple of clicking notes. Okay. But don't make any sense. And then it just goes silent for a while. But if you let it play long enough, it comes back in completely out of phase with everything else. What? Uh, oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I just keep moving, so I guess I've never heard it come back in. pull up his video really quick? Do you want me to start it and have it come back in and out? Well, actually, could we pull up uh, his video link that I sent you? Because he plays it really clearly for us, and then we'll we'll hear it in context a little better. But he he amplifies the channel so that it's it's uh, really clear. You posted the video in Google Docs. Is it linked on YouTube? And if so, can you just post me? I link? linked it. I linked it in the Facebook chat. Yeah, let me pull that up. Uh, I shall do so. Yeah, post it to stream chat, and then I will do it there. Yes, no problem. I'll do it. Sorry, One my computer second. was hating on me today, and so I'm running on absolute bare bones to get this done. Yeah, that is okay. All right, so here is his video. It's really good. Uh, the moment in question. I search for it here. Totally out of time. Everything else. All right, so we're looking for 104. Is the timestamp. Okay. Here we go. And this is out of phase, or this is correct? Awful. <laughs> yeah. Good. 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 Okay. I spent some time reverse engineering the game's music yeah, software, right, and I so eventually he, got to the bottom of it. A little bit. So here's what's happening. Uh. The, uh, There's an on happens, being sent to a channel at the wrong time, right? Exactly. So the NES has a limit of 256 bytes of data per channel per music track. Okay. So the full data for the Pulse 2 accompaniment pattern was 394 bytes. So when the track reaches that, that 256 byte limit, it loops around to the beginning. But then the setup data that like triggers the tracks... Um, gets parsed as these kind of like odd buzzy notes. And it's like uh, a short one and then a really, really long one that just sounds like the track is dropped out. So it sounds like it's just a bunch <laughs> of press, but really it's the second note of the setup data. So, which the sound, you know, doesn't know how to parse correctly. And so it just creates this huge, huge long pause in the channel. So when it resumes at the start of the loop again, uh, it's like right after where it, 
cut out basically, but it starts at the beginning okay. of, of the pulse two loop. So the pulse two loop is, is starting in the middle of the track the second time around. Right, bad. So it's totally off. Does this then so, cascade and like get worse and worse and worse? Like a bad uh, Steve yeah, Reich piece? Yeah. Like... Yes, it does. <laughs> and it's fantastic. So now as we start our playthrough, Yay. we're going to be able to hear this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great, excellent. And here's a link to my transcription of the, the one that's actually happening. And then I'll also post the so-called fixed one that he did. Okay. Sea Island? Yes. Every town, by the way, ends with cola. All island towns are cola. So, notice Pulse 2 is dropped out. Yep, just the base and the melody now. <laughs> I love that though. This music here, I'm gonna stop for just a moment, always seems very ominous. Like, you don't know that there's bad news yet, but the moment you start talking uh -huh. to this dude, it's like, oh, damn it. Yeah, this is actually. Oh, hold on. This is an NSF file. Which number is this? This sounds it's... exactly like a Shadowgate track. The background where you're about looks to die. like Shadowgate to me, too. Like that weird. <laughs> Tiling. This is like when you're about to be burned to death by the dragon. Okay, it's not that scary here, thankfully. <laughs> Don't tell my That's villagers so that scary. aliens came. <laughs> okay, so this track is called the Southern Cross. Okay. So it's meant to be kind of fateful and ominous. Is an ace baseball pitcher visiting his uncle, and because he's a baseball pitcher, this yo yo is fantastic for him. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we have the, the pulse 2 again, correct, because the track restarted. Yeah, yeah, because the track restarted, hopefully. Right, and so if you don't stick around, if you just talk to the villagers and make your way to the dungeon. It trips on itself. It's so awesome. And the best thing is, uh, you know, how many people didn't even notice it growing up? Because it's, it's a pretty uh, low volume channel to begin with. I would have told you I know everything about this game and I'd never noticed it before. I like the pig turned its butt to you randomly. I was, not, I was gonna make sure that you talked to the pig. <laughs> so once you've talked to everybody, you can progress into the dungeon. And now... Did they put the pig's butthole in there? Uh, it's got like yeah. a curly tail and a butthole, yes. Indeed. Yeah, okay. It absolutely does. So now like Dragon Warrior mode is done, and now we're gonna progress into like Zelda mode. Yeah. There's the Southern Cross again because the, the chief sister is being all That's right. Her hand is like not attached to the rest of her. <laughs> and what is she holding? It's like a weird croissant slash rat thing. What? what is croissant? She oh, oh, her. No, isn't her, that her like thumb that's and her, her like, pinky? Pinky? Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, that's like a weird fingers play. <laughs> My new band name. <laughs> <laughs> Gastrointestinal monsters. Alright, so this is MSF Track 4. Those that are following along in the description. Problem. One of them is that if you didn't know where that switch is, think of all 
all the time you have to waste jumping on all these little piles to find it. <laughs> and multiply that by like thousands of rooms in this game. Uh. See all those piles up there? <laughs> there's a lot of that in this game, trying to figure out which switch is the right one. Yeah, there's a lot of really unforgiving material. There's a sequel, which was actually the second to last game released on the NES. <laughs> and it addresses a lot of the types of gameplay issues. This one is punishing in the old Nintendo sense. I, I always like this one a lot better. Although there is the Egypt level in the second one, because it's a time travel one. That's right, the time travel in the second one, you get to meet the time I, I just want to call people attention to how looking at me that whole channel like lost amount of stuff that is like the sexiest for them. Love that so much. It's better than the stuff on top. Yeah, I agree. You should assume that any room I don't go to in a dungeon, by the way, is either a dead end or an instant death trap, both of which exist in abundance. Oh, because, you know, Star Traffic, I tried to find the uh, crafted mead that was the Banana Foster one, because they talk about bananas several times in this game, but they didn't have it before, so instead I have Pineapple Cider. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I good. like how during the dungeon level, you'll notice the music has changed. This is the same yeah. room of the dungeon. So this track is called, I believe it's called, like, Danger Room or something. <laughs> <laughs> Danger zone. Danger zone. There it is. Nice. <laughs> so are we? Are all these tracks named after pop song? No. I mean, so this was this is the end of the stuff. There was no other track. Really. And I can't find any other credits for Yoshio Hirai in this game. Yeah, it's, it's called, like, hidden. So, here's what's interesting about this one, uh, before you leave it. Yeah. You find, it's like one of the left here, where it's... P.S. as Dana looks that up, if I go up right now, it kills you and you lose the power-ups you just found. Don't be Jeez! <laughs> yeah, you can't get too greedy. Okay, so... The way this one starts, it's really weird. So, do you want me to restart it by four, Are you able to? Yeah. So, notice where the triangle channel comes from. Mm. Mm. It's like the, the intro thing hasn't really stopped yet. Is it just me, get or is it like oddly pitched as well? Like it's not quite quarter tones, but something's off yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely off. One thing you might be hearing is it is it particularly the the higher stuff that sounds that way to you? Yes. So this technique's all over this game. It's actually pulse two is very slightly out of phase and a slightly different um, timbre. Okay. So like, you're kind of like. Yeah, this is a real simple pattern. It actually reminds me a little bit of like Sweet Child of Mine. Da 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 da. Da 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 <laughs> little potion from Zelda. Yeah. It's kind of a medicinal like, pulse stamper as well, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Alright, are we ready to go fight the boss? Yeah. Okay. Oh 
Oh my god. <laughs> I love that the music stops and then it's like, oh yeah, I can use these other things. Look how bold he is! That use that pause <laughs> oh my god, we're progressing through track so quickly. <laughs> Yay, fanfare! <laughs> yep. Finally, a typical fanfare. Six tracks already, yeah. just in that opening that sequence short of gameplay. Fanfare that just played, by the way, is another flat six. Also one has eight. another flat six, flat yeah. seven one, yeah. And that one is very Mario flagpole. <laughs> this is a classic the sub. I've got a killer arrangement of this as a lullaby for piano that I play for the kids. Uh, oh! <laughs> Alright, so this is NSF track 12. Yeah. Okay, so following along. Did really quick? Did you guys hear how good that dolphin is? Like, by the standards of this machine? <laughs> is it the same as the robot, though? No, it's a different. The, 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 the dolphin chirp is different. You'll hear, it again uh, we'll hear her again. Okay. When we, when we rescue her son. That's right. The female dolphin. happens on this track, which happens so frequently, because it's the overworld track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other one, which is way at the end, is like a, a final theme, and it actually doesn't sound incomplete with what happens in that one. So, it'll be fun when we get there. But this one, like, once you notice it, you can't unnotice it. Oh, Ooh, captured by 1776. <laughs> I mean, Americans love America, so if we're they making a do. game for just make it have a lot of America in it. That's right. Yeah. Just wait till we hit the My Country Tis of the in here. <laughs> when does he get a gun? <laughs> he never gets a gun. No, he gets a gun what? in Chapter 7. He gets a gun. Uh, yeah, he gets like a laser. Laser shooter. <laughs> so now I can die. So you gotta love that syncopation. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, yeah, the syncopated rhythm is really killer in just about every track in this game. But this one's always he really likes his descending bass lines, too. So many <laughs> tracks have that. Yeah. Alright, onward. Adding to our 
list of like dick moves that the game does, this wall doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and later on, that type of crap is gonna be required, not optional. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, this bum 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 that rhythm is in so many tracks of this game, it actually made the transcription go a lot faster than rather yeah, than the good 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 just copy. Hmm? I would just copy paste it and then put it wherever I needed it. Pitch wise. I really like that every special weapon is useful at least once. Yeah. It's good game design. It's like Chekhov's gun in gaming. Hmm. The only other acceptable option is where something has an unexpected use beyond, like, it, where you need it, where you can use it again. Some of the Zelda games do that really well, where, like, you can kind of problem solve and use an item in an unexpected way. how the bass is really tuned very uh it's really strong rhythm what or rhythm i can't talk tonight volume is high compared to pulse 2 and pulse uh. 2 has some of the best stuff <laughs> played just in that last room for like a hot second. Oh, because the boogie mon the boogie monster was there. Every time the boogie monster shows up and plays the danger zone song. Does it? Yep. Because it seems like oddly not threatening enough to warrant the use of that. Hmm. By the boogie monster, I should clarify. Uh, the goo monster that pops up and shoots the projectile that. Mm. There's the dolphin sound again, Julian. Ah. Uh, there we go. I like how it translates for you, because yeah. apparently you speak dolphin. That's right, yeah. Like, <laughs> totally dolphin. And the dolphin. Yeah. 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 See how that pause starts to move. Yep, I'm one shot short, basically. <laughs> wonderful victory theme again. Classic NES fan <laughs> Okay, he was doing eighth notes. This sounds very similar to the Final Fantasy III victory, not victory theme, but the. <laughs> I we can't see you. I can't see you. Oh man! Oh. Isn't that sick? Oh. Now that. Wow. That fits the baseline. That is fabulous. What? Yeah. That obviously oh, so has, good. like, what, rum and pineapple juice? It's Malibu and some pineapple juice and no pineapple juice. Rum and orange juice and pineapple and mango and, and coconut. Okay. Hair. Perfect. Are putting me to change. Oh, that's good. That's good. 
expect. So, I want to prep. The second chapter is about to end. We finish the second dungeon. You usually get... The expectation is now one Dragon Warrior segment, one dungeon per chapter. That's about to change. And the first time this next track came up, it scared the bejesus out of me. I should clarify, I was in the second grade. <laughs> That's right. Pretty so much here ever. we go. Right away. Ah. Now, normally the chapter titles were silent up until that point. This track scared you? Not the sad fanfare, like the you have lost your submarine, but uh the uh the chapter title. Like oh. Yes, or... Right, right, right. I thought that was scary as a kid. What is that one? Shipwrecked, I think it's called. Da, 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 da. Feels very Final Fantasy IV. It does. Oh, wait, now we're chugging along. Oh, but it doesn't matter now. Yeah. <laughs> we could stop at that little hut for some coconut milk, but I have some next to me, so I don't need to go to the dungeon. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> It's a good thing this track plays so much because it's probably my favorite. If this track wasn't so good, the game would not be good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a bold statement, but I totally agree. Are you killing chocobos? I'm just gonna relate this to Final Fantasy as much as I can, obviously. I think we should do that, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember what's in this box either, but I like boxes, so I'm gonna get it. <laughs> oh, like... I did want it. Okay. Yes, <laughs> I remember thinking the same thing when I was little. Very American. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and in the next room you have to fight a lot of these. <laughs> They're really obnoxious. There are a lot of enemies in this game where if you have the right weapon, great, otherwise you are SOL. annoying as they are in Mega Man. <laughs> Holy crap. You can always see them. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. That's a nightmare and, ostrich. Oh and they're God. very quick. So it's like they, you really feel the okay, yeah, yeah, it was I feel like the game doesn't prep you for the skull. No. Now, as this room loaded, did you remember where all the tiles were? Because if you jump in the water, you die. Yep. Why do you die in the water? Water's bad. Yeah. You can't swim in there. Oh, you can't swim because then you're a great baseball player. Even though you're a great <laughs> baseball player visiting an island where your uncle is assigned to degree, you can't swim. That's correct. <laughs> Notice you didn't fight any of the It is worth uh, pointing out. Dana's right. There's no boss to that kid. Chapter oh. 3 here is the longest chapter. Oh, here we go. This one's called Town. This is another great track. Yep, you're gonna be hearing this a lot, because this town's big and I have to talk to everybody. So, right now, Pulse 2 is doing the same thing it does in the overall. Da -da 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 -da. But when it loops back around here, which will be after this C section. Listen to how active Pulse 2 is. But then it, I Pulse it. 2 is doing all the work in this game. This is the game for second violinists, man. <laughs> oh, this this person's hilarious. So you did in fact meet Miss Coral in the other town. Coral mm -hmm. Coral. She has a red dress, but otherwise looks almost the same. 
it's, it's the same sprite, Jesus. but different color. You have to say which one is the best. And there is only one correct answer. If you answer Coral, you can't get in to talk to the chief. <laughs> so you have to... Uh... You're so <laughs> honest. She's cute, too. <laughs> so she's Marianne, obviously. <laughs> the other one, I think, actually had, like, red hair, so... Wow. Yeah. It took me a long Soul. time to understand how this guy's head was constructed in terms of artwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold still. <laughs> so he's got just like a really big mustache. Uh huh. Right? And, and like, then that's an eyebrow? Long eyebrows? Yep. He's got a super mustache. He's like a Dragon Ball character. Uh... It's a very Mario mustache. my favorite game on our streams is what is that sprite? <laughs> we had the pig in Final Fantasy VI, That's who's really a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the pig. <laughs> this island chief at least wears clothing, which I guess is an improvement. He's got some pretty excellent, like, mustache leading into the sideburn. Yeah, like mustache yeah. mutton chops. Yeah. Very American. Very American. <laughs> anyway, if we go help the daughter, he'll fix the boat. Yeah. Seems like a good deal. Oh, Let's go do that. I just love that opening ostinato. It's so simple that it really adds so much energy to that track. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, we have the same old baseline. Yep. <clears throat> That's how we signify islands in this game. Yeah. And this is one of two times we have to hear a lot of this track. Oh, now I can talk to the sleeping coma girl. <laughs> Her name is Banana. Yeah, Banana. Like banana, except a girl. Because she likes bananas. That was not Banana's double box on track. Like, she likes. Uh, why bananas? You're in the tropics, Ryan? This game is set on a tropical set of punch violence. And bananas are <laughs> tropical? Bananas are also one of the most popular fruits in the United States. So. There's that. Mm. Oh! That, which reminds me. I have to tell my banana story. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, let's hear the banana story during Dungeon 4 here. Yeah. Alright, so, once upon a time, I was six years old, and my street would have a block party that was like a three-day block party for July 4th. And so, the day before, this was July, uh, they were having just like lawn games for different pieces of kids, and we were all kind of standing around, waiting for things to start, and a girl who was a bit older than me was eating a banana, and she was just like eating a banana, kind of waving around, like talking. Um, it's just what it's like. And a piece of banana flew out of the wall, got lost in her head. Wait, Dana, I can't hear you when all the sound effects are happening. Yeah. Oh, no. I need to hear, I'm following along with this story, I need to hear it. <laughs> Okay. Go back to the girl had a banana. The girl was oh, eating a banana. banana. She was eating banana. She was watching what she was doing. I'm gonna leave closer to my mic to see if that helps. Uh, and so she was eating and talking at the same time. A piece of banana flew out of her mouth <laughs> and got lodged in my eye. What? You know, I'm six. I'm, I'm like kind of rubbing my eye, like, like, ow, you know, like, couldn't figure out what was going on. So eventually it got bad enough. I went home. And my mom figured out, like, something's going on with my eyes. So she took me to the emergency room. And, like, oh along God. the way, we wow. established that like, that was the only thing it could be. It was, like, a piece of banana. And so oh. we came oh here. Like, we're checking me in. And we're trying to explain, like, what happened. <laughs> and this nurse who's like, I've been here 30 years. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. You want to hear the ER, right? <laughs> yeah, you're all great. Uh, so then yeah. also, a lot of doctors 
like already on vacation. So I end up we end up waiting a really long time, and then we get this guy who's apparently like he's like physical therapist or something. Like he mostly dealt with sports injuries. <laughs> and he comes in, and I'm just like crying and freaking out. Uh, and you know, like when you go to the dentist and they have like the water thing that they shoot the water in. Yeah. yeah. They kind of use something like that to kind of like dislodge and like wash out the eye. But I remember that as being like just as dramatic as having the stuff in there. So I'm like crying, <laughs> like crying, crying, crying. And he, the guy, I remember this distinctly because I was six years old. He went, "Suck it up, kid." Oh, that's so cool! That's wow. like, put it on the knees! <laughs> but I can tell he's already told the shop the roast. <laughs> and before I got a scar, I'm gonna keep banana. I should give wow. it to this one. <laughs> a little purple white. So this is the first boss you have to be creative to kill. It's immune to whatever you do. Nothing works. Found his bridge. We might just be able to drop the fire in the water. Douse it. If it kills us, we kill him. Ah, uh, I didn't pull it off though. Oh, oh my gosh. Did that scratch what freaked me out as a kid? That death theme? Yeah. And you get sent back really far when you die, so just try to not do that again. And the funny thing is that the NSF file was dragged as player miss. Like you missed a jump or something. Like, that's a fine way to You're gonna miss a lot of jumps in this game, accurate. Well, how interesting that there's a little halo on him, given Nintendo's restrictions, generally, on having any kind of religious content in games. Mm. Yeah, that is interesting to me, actually. Well, America's a Christian nation. <laughs> So, but even so, I, I, they, they're yeah. very particular about it. And in fact, a lot of games yeah. can't use crosses all over the place that they then replaced when they were released into oh. the US. Right. I guess that's a little generic, but I mean, it seems religious, but not specifically religious enough, maybe? I don't know. Oh my god, Karen, I just saw the mutton shops list. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Four is good. Nope, guess what? Buzzfeed is a bad thing. I like the older ones. The newer ones are a little bit lacking. Oh my god, new mutton shops are pretty good. Except for the very last one. Like him. The classic, like, just simple chromatic up and down boss game. I do dig the surprise effect that they're able to get. I'm glad you guys are able to listen to this loop over and over again. I very siren-esque. It seems sort of like you're about to die music. Then I had this part, this descending foot part. So in the in the tradition of great boss battles, you know, we go to a very incessant baseline, but it's introducing a lot of the harmonic instability. That F sharp to C natural thing. Yeah. A lot of tension. I like that the sound effect interrupts all of the music there, basically. Yeah. Cool. It's cool, like, you see the layers of flame diminish on him. That's a really good animation. It is. Also, because this is like Zelda, it's got an annoying little chime when you're about to die. It's a little bit chirpier <laughs> and birdier, though. It's not quite as bad as Zelda. Yeah. Except that every time you do anything, it sounds. Watch. Yep. 
<laughs> it's like, by the way! <laughs> you're dying, you're hmm. dying, you're dying. That's weird. I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. <laughs> exactly. Wow, you've done it. Yep. <clears throat> Refrain from turning your power off or reset it, Ryan. Mm -hmm. I know it's really something. Yeah, it's really <laughs> something. Were you, did you ever see that and go, oh my god, now I have to? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, visit I some have. of those other places we saw to figure out that you're supposed to come here? Or you can okay. just know and come here, and we're gonna go with that approach right now. This is weird graveyard music. Let's listen to the graveyard music for just a moment, actually, because this is the only time it plays, I think. Not Baroque enough. It's definitely not Castlevania. It's, like, more modern and creepier. I mean, got your Dimin' a few words, though. Yes. It's already it reminds me of something, but I don't know what it is. <clears throat> You'll get to hear it again after the dungeon. <laughs> Look at the love the name. Also, we have skeleton dogs. Yeah, bone dogs. <laughs> to match the bone ostriches. Uh, and we're, we're in a graveyard, so everything has to be dead. That's right, there's skulls out there. This game didn't hold back. This is the first dungeon that has a lot of dead ends. If you go up there, you get kicked out of the graveyard and have to try again. Yeah. There, and there's, they drop you out and you have to go all the way back to the beginning. It's really trial and error. And then That's right. <laughs> Here we've got mummies, I think. Yeah. You pick a lot of Okay, if I wasn't starting this dungeon with one heart, I'd show off here. Watch the pattern. See how the yo yo catches something every once in a while? That's because it is. Yeah. See the ghosts go back and forth, and they're immune unless you use the wand. Everything about this game is so arbitrary and designed to screw you over. Why do I like it so much? <laughs> <laughs> Phasing between pulses one and two happens a ton in this game, and I th I think it's because of sound effects. I'm assuming. I think. I mean, I'm do. assuming that's the reason. This, by the way, is the single time. most bullshit move on the NES. You ready for this? That staircase is a dead end. You have to walk through that wall right there. What? <laughs> that is pretty bullshit. <laughs> if you take that staircase, it's an exit to the dungeon. You have to start over. Oh my god! How do you figure that out? You, you like, do it accidentally. <laughs> there's wow. a shadow on that wall, actually. It can be like, yeah. an outrageous amount of attention. This room is pretty sweet. So, in theory, you can go down there and find the light. I don't do it that way. <laughs> you just know. This is impressive, because there's Very. a lot of water in here where you can die. Impressive, Star Fox. There it is. See? Oh. <laughs> there. Nice 
we're done. Oh no, hands. That's just that's just your like mummy father wanting to play a game of catch, Ryan. Why are you spurning him? <laughs> Son, I just wanna play a game of catch. <laughs> I wish I hadn't gotten hit by him so much actually, because now I'm chirping again. Chirping I'm just trying to you practice your pitch it. Can they walk on those? It yep. does sound like your battery's dying for your smoke detector. Like, that's precisely <laughs> that sound. To see that. I can't wait. I haven't like I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. I'm gonna take my mom. She wanted to see it. Hell, hey, Wizrobe from Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> there's, been, there's been like so many Zelda characters, little snaky bits and the bats and the. Having to use the reflect mirror, by the way, is right out of Zelda 2's playbook for how you deal with those things. <laughs> <laughs> the mummies, by the way, deal three hearts worth of damage. Yeah. They're, they're really not a deal. But you do that, you just gotta isolate. Yeah, having them stack up like the way I've done it here is actually uh, suboptimal. So. Yeah, getting them to split is better. Yeah. Ooh! Nicely done. Nice. I love that they make, like, bubbly noises, like they're bubbling up out of the water. Yeah. Nope. Which also happens in lava levels. I don't think there's a way to get more hearts here. I think I just have to use the boss with one heart now. I think you've already given up all your opportunities for hearts. Because there were some earlier. <laughs> well, I, I saw you deliberately not go back for some of them, so it was definitely a choice. I'd recommend the save, yep. <laughs> this boss is actually probably the easiest boss in the game. I think I can do it. Yeah. Unless you just get unlucky, he's not too bad. He sends little guys at you, but they don't, like, track you. They just fly at you and then disappear. Mm. Oh, even the, the bottle opener looks like a little, like, carrot, see? <laughs> nice. Everything is so on tonight. Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> How did you figure this game out at all? 
Yeah, right? Oh, I missed the skull, like, vomiting water everywhere. Okay, now we're back to the graveyard theme. Do we, want, do we want to say anything more about that? As to how you figure that out, there is an NPC who will tell you. Uh. Yeah, we're skipping a lot of talk to people. Right, if I go, like, have Mike, the character, learn all the information, we can't get the game done in 90 minutes. Yeah. Now, I purposely skipped this because I want to be full health for the next dungeon. You'll see why shortly. Also, it's totally agonizing to watch that fill up, and it gets worse. <laughs> So I know, you're like, thank time you! time for Ryan's theory on why this game has not been re-released or re-updated in any way. Oh, interesting. Because you have to cross-dress to get in? Yep. Mm. Yeah, this is a town of all women. And the but that's... Color, that's bullshit! Zelda does! So you can it's get in. That. That in Gerudo Town. Exactly. And that game is supposed to be out. It's explored a tad better in Gerudo Town. Mm. Oh yeah, because fortune sucks. Look at this. Risking life and limb. A bridge over troubled water. Again, America. <laughs> What's on reference? I get it. I could have predicted that. <laughs> I mean, this place basically looks like we're in one of right now, so... We have the descending do. base again, by the way. But this yeah. is as close as we get to a straight rhythm track in this game. Because it's the castle, right? Yeah. Talking oh. to the queen. This is the only moment this oh, plays. Yeah. So I'm gonna sit here a minute and watch her flap up and down, I guess, and chat. <laughs> Thoughts on this track, Dana? Uh, the Pulse 1 and 2 are doing. They're not actually offset from what I remember, but they are in unison, but they're in different timbres. So that's what's giving it that weird echoey effect. Okay. And it's very chromatic. It noodles a lot, I think. It's like vaguely Aladdin-esque. Yeah. Yeah, kind of exotic. Oh, is this like a Scheherazade thing? I think yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I think we're as soon as there. I started to say it, I was like, oh, man. It's popcorn. What? <laughs> what? Yo-yo upgraded here, which is really awesome. Hmm. Like it. Nice. <laughs> like an awesome hard. lady warrior. Yeah. And defend she cola. That's right. Now, before also, why leave, is everything a cola? <laughs> there's one other person you have to talk to. I don't know why cola, because cola's American. I think it is. Yeah. It's very well, American. The so cola good. nut is tropical, where they get the flavor of cola. Maybe, but cola is like. Americans drink it, right? Like, yeah. Anyway, if you don't talk to this NPC who tells you to shout abracadabra and jump, you can't do it. The tunnel won't open. You just have to kill yourself. Oh, rude. Yeah. <laughs> I love his little pigtails. I have long wanted this character to be in Smash Brothers. It's not gonna happen, <laughs> but uh. Specifically, when he's dressed up. No, no, no. Just as in general. I don't care if uh, we see him dressed up as the girl or not. I just want the yo-yo. Another yo-yo fighter. <laughs> Alright, so... This dungeon is absurdly short, actually. You say abracadabra, and jump ten times. Did you say it? Did you say abracadabra? Did you say I it? I just said it. Okay. Oh, I get it. 
So even if you jump ten times, knowing... That's right, even if you know in advance you can do it. No. The reason for that is it doesn't want you skipping the ghost level. Or the shooting that star. That makes sense. Eh. The shooting star, by the way, is exactly like the yo-yo, except look at that range. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be useful. There are a couple moments where it matters a lot. Most of the time, it resets faster if you're up close anyway. But during those few moments where you care about it, uh, you care a lot about it. I love the fish that, like, learn to walk on land. Yeah. <laughs> Only to die by your yeah, hands. Right. <laughs> this weapon is also twice as powerful as the yo-yo, so you, you want to stay above six hearts to use it. If you fall low on health, you have to use the yo-yo again. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a Master Sword thing. Having right, the, right. the beam versus not. I'm never not going to be here for this Pulse 2 channel. <laughs> so, also, a new thing, if I remember right. You gotta start just making guesses eventually. Oh, so awful. Bullshit. This like game <laughs> seems like it was made to sell, like, the Nintendo Hotline. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these blue squares sink you instantly if you don't move. You gotta just jump wow. right away. Just, just. And I don't think the enemy shows you, right? Because it, it stays up. It does up not for sync for the enemy, no. You just have to learn by killing yourself on it. Okay, so that, that's poor induction there. The game needs to show the enemy jumping and the yeah. thing disappearing. Right? Now, this is so actually good game design back. if you're gonna do random bullshit hidden tiles. You see how I turned on the switch next to the chest? And there's exactly one jump's worth that I would need? It's there for you. Mm. Yeah, that makes better game design sense than just like, well, just guess what's gonna happen. And having it as an optional reward and not a required thing is okay there, I think. You're yeah. never required to guess at an invisible tile. It's always optional. Right. Tiles. Now we're in danger zone. Now we're in the danger zone. The red tiles are fire ice tiles. They'll be the same thing, they're just different. Also, what's with the weird, like, pajama hobo man? <laughs> he looks like he's wearing one of those like false noses, like. Yeah. Oh god, is that supposed to be a very bad, very bad caricature? A la. It's here. It's here. Americans' racial history. I oh, I hope not. So. I really hope that not as well. I mean, it could be argued that that's like also the plot of Legend of Zelda as well. <laughs> yeah, awkward. The Aryan triumph. That rune, by the way, wow. is the only rune you have to kill a boogeyman. Really odd. This red tile right in front of you is very hard to see. Yeah. There's a lot of whole tone in this game. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because it's it's full tone not used for like a dream sequence aspect, you know? Yeah. Like, does anybody can anybody think of like non dream sequency whole tone writing <laughs> where it's used like I can think mostly of it in space, space, but not mm. but otherwise no. Yeah, that still has that levity in it. This kills my hypothesis, Dana. This is the one room where the boogeyman shows up and it's safe. Ah. I, I prefer him in his green color. It's a pretty shade. I think he shows up more often in red, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I first associated him as being, like, a lava monster. Right. And then I was like, oh, there's a water one. I used to think these guys were, like, evil olives, not eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to some people, olives are evil. 
I'm not one of them, I love them. But... Oh, man. And we've got, like, Minotaurs in here? <laughs> yeah, that's a Minotaur, that's pretty clear. And spike walls? No reason. Yeah, yeah well, I'm like, what are yeah, those? Is, is that ice cream? They might as well be bricks, they're just there to look scary. <laughs> Whatever. And to show us that there's no hidden, like, wall stuff here, I guess? Perhaps. Well, that's a little misleading, though, isn't it? Yeah. Because, at this point, you have to randomly walk through this wall with no shadow. That's the end of the dungeon right there. Right. Oh, but I meant at least where there's a... You can't get to critical. Right, right, right. Okay. Great, we're doing pretty well. How did this guy get to like, food? I have the scroll of Obob, which is awesome. Obob. Oh, I love that you don't actually have to run back. They just play the Southern Cross and they go, run, run, hurry, hurry, run, run, hurry, hurry. Yeah, I like that as well. You arrive at Miracola, where you're going to perform a Miracola. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bebop, Bobop, 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 Bebop, 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 Get up, Bebop, Wake up, wake up, banana. She's wow. She's really hungry. awkward that, like, she obviously likes bananas, she's holding a banana cream pie in theory, and, like, she has the chubby cheeks going on, like, she just eats desserts all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Aw, hey, Navcom, we haven't seen you in a while. Navcom, by the way, looks the way he does, because he's based on Rob the Robot, which shipped with the original model NES. Yeah, but you can't use uh... Rob the Robot. No, you can't. No, that's helpful. I know, right? It's really bugging me. Where else do you that, like? I've seen that ship before. Where is that ship shape? The, ship the, shape. The, the submarine ship. shape. The what now? The submarine shape. Yeah. I don't know. That's, oh, I it mean, it looks like Samus Aran's gunship. It does. It does. I, I'm thinking it looks like the ship from the game. Especially, Sting. you notice I faced it down right there. It looks a lot like Samus's gunship rendered for the NES. Yeah, that that's true. The side profile though, it looks like the game the, the game Stinger, but they're not quite the same. And it's bothering me because I feel like it looks really similar. Mm. I hadn't thought about that, end. but I agree with you, it does look like the Stinger. Ooh, that's a great game. Not exactly suitable for like streaming since there's not really anything to do. You play until you explode, right? Yeah, pretty much. Tuna <laughs> cola. Sushi cola. Yeah. Tuna cola. This island is too Bait. Cool. <laughs> this one has- there's some good puns on this island. And did you notice this island is tuna-shaped, see? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Tuna cola. Oh, cute. You're like, cool. Alright. Hold right. on. <laughs> yep. What's gonna happen? Well... Open water forever. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, man. Uh <laughs> now I'm in a whale. Oh, whale. <laughs> the whale's totally nice. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> Thank you, Julianne. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. Wow. If I'm not, if I'm not being validated, it's my fun. Blah, blah, blah. Now, he, now he's going to tell you that, he's, that Dr. J was committed by aliens. Thanks, dude. Anyway, we have to go find okay. this lighter so, so we can light that raft on fire. Here. Because we're going to start a fire in the belly of this whale. That is... Ouch! Yeah, there you gotta is... make the whale sneeze. By the way, there is no fighting in this chapter whatsoever. This is just a bullshit maze. Right out of, like, Dragon Warrior, Little Big Brothers, or, like, pick an old NES RPG with, like, bullshit mazes. They thought it was a good idea to include that. Mm. But how great are the guts that you're swimming through? <laughs> yeah, they remind me of Contra a lot, actually. They actually remind me of the rocks in Hardman, uh, in Mega Man. Mega Man 3. I could see that. 
Usually they would be yellow in that one. Right. Yeah, it's the red color that gives me the Contra reference, where everything is like fighting biologic organisms. So the ostinato in the bass carries through the entire time, which gives a lot of the harmonic tension to this track. It's B flat, B, D, C, B, D, D, C, B, B, D, C, B, B, D, C, over and over again. So it can't really go anywhere, it's very static. The loop is pretty short here, yeah. Eight measures. Which gets maddening if you're having a hard time with maze. Hmm. Yeah, the maze sucks. I hate it. In fact, I cheated. There's a tab open on the right side that's been open for six hours now. It's telling me exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I figured this is a music stream. For eight measures of music, we're gonna get the hell out of here. Yeah. I'm not sure, from a logical perspective, that lighting a fire inside the whale is their best play here, considering they're in a submarine <laughs> already. <laughs> Whatever. Getting smoke here. I like how they didn't get back in the ship after they lit the fire. <laughs> <laughs> but look how neatly it lands for you. Yeah. I promise never to smoke again. Uh, life so, lessons with Star Trek. This is one of the coolest things about this game. I have to tell you, Doctor J's last words. Blah blah blah. Evil aliens. Tell Mike to dip my letter in water. Now what that means is, attached to the instruction manual of this game was a letter uh, printed on custom stationery, not joking at all, that if at this point you put the letter in water, there's a secret code on it that you must have to progress into the game. Oh, I love that crap. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. But it ensures that if you bought this game secondhand, you were kind of screwed. Right, <laughs> because... Again, America, right? Blockbuster video at the time. They specifically thought of a way to get around. And so if you rent this game from Blockbuster, they just printed the code, it turned out. Also, the code uh... is the code to capitalism. It's 747. So <laughs> <laughs> they ran out of important dates in American history, apparently. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ah, oh, Captain Bell. We got some good themes in here. I know. Oh, the straight is blocked. That is a damn shame. Okay. We're not going to go to town right away. It's faster than it is. We'll go to that. Was that pun on purpose? Which, what pun? <laughs> a damn shame. Oh, no. <laughs> that was totally not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was when he says we weren't going to go right to town. I thought you were implying that he had said straight to town or something. Uh, I, just, I found the pun in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> we're always looking for puns, though. we got to talk to Hook, the fishing master, first. Uh, <laughs> the early bird catches the worm. Ah, uh, here's a worm. Yeah, we need a worm. Yes, okay. we do. Sweet. Worm accomplished. Now we can go back to town. Oh, every time you get in the submarine now, Navcom tells you he's searching for Dr. J at this point when you give him the code. You can't just get in the submarine anymore, which really uh. sucks. <laughs> it does look like Sam's a gunship a lot. And Stinger. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Karen, Opa Opa from Fantasy Zone? Where's the other Feeling that one? I just don't know it well uh, enough. Okay, it's a pick it up my brain. arcade master, master system game. Old Sega. Alright, another town I gotta talk to all these people. Bell Cola, named for That guy has Bell. a good mustache. A lot of good mustaches. This, mustache, yeah. <laughs> this guy's a oh, sad mustache. Go see the couple of us there. Yeah, now we got a music guy. Ooh! No, actually, this is Me, important. so my Ooh. Bell? What? It sounds what? like nonsense, uh, but there's an important way to understand that. In fact, it's going to be the key, not that one, but that idea is going to be the key to the puzzle of this chapter, very shortly. Oh, I have to talk to the old lady. Alright, now i got to talk to you, Miss Belcola. 
I assume anyway, because it's the same sprite as Miss Beauty Patch <laughs> winner from the other two towns. Alright, now you've talked to everybody. By the way, this guy's sprite is short and fat like the other island chiefs, but check this dude out. He's like... <laughs> it's Jafar on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Jafar on Jafar. vacation. Jafar. <laughs> Alright, you have to go get Peter's right. help to open the straight. Yeah, go get Peter's help and then let's stop and talk about his name for a sec. Yeah, yeah, I will. Peter is this parrot over here, by the way. Yeah, look at Peter, he's so cute. The animal sound again. Hold on, listen to that sound effect. It's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now we'll stop and uh, have Dana talk about the music for a second. So I was just gonna note, you know, so often we have bum 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 in the bass. For once, we have actually more of a melodic rhythm, although it's a very static bass line. Bum 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 bum. Yeah, so this it's reminds a nice me break. of uh, the Culture Brain games, the, the Legend of Scheherazade, Little Ninja Brothers, Flying Warriors. So it's nice in that it's so good. Uh, what was I gonna say? About I like this? that last bit. That ding, 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 ding. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Bum, 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 bum. So instead of that arpeggiating and that like forward momentum, this is like a very chill area. That's right. Peter the parrot doesn't give a crap about you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and like, since we like... gave him the worm now. It's a very short loop. Twelve, twelve bars. That's right. Oh, and see now, now he's a domi. So, so let's so see if far. Julian gets it yet. Domi. What? <laughs> That's your clue. That's how to open the straight, Julianne. Alright, now you know everything you need to know to open the straight. Let's go do it. Okay. I like that they wrote two sub C themes and both of them get enough airtime. You know, it's not just like the first time you get sub C. Right. It's every time you go in. And then whenever you are cruising, that gets its own yep. melody. And they're related. They're, they have the same harmonic motion. Uh, they're using the same timbers in the pulse channels. I think they're in the same key. I Check have to that. to you. It took me an embarrassingly long time to make my way through this invisible maze. Because look, if you go this way... Oh, boo, you're not there. You can see it. <laughs> Alright, so what you do is you turn left here instead. <laughs> so, Julian, what did the parrot say? No, me. So far. Me. Right. Come on, music people. No. Put that knowledge to use. <laughs> so. <laughs> this is the day I learned solfage as a kid. <laughs> that sounded me. You said May, not me. Right? So it was a it was a E flat. But a little kid reads that as me, right? Fine. <laughs> also, you can't step on the E flat. Okay. <laughs> I love. Let's talk about the scene for a sec, because I don't know if it goes on when it. Uh, this oh. comes back in the ruins next chapter, but we can do it now. I like this, by the way, this track. Captain Bell here. I'm gonna let the loop start over. This feels very... I mean, it helps that we have a pipe organ sitting in front of us, but mm -hmm. it feels very wanting to reference organ music to me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we've got a low pedal. We've got... Right. We've got this kind of bariolage, as I like to call it, even though it's it's also very keyboardy, <laughs> idiomatic. Yep. And then we get a more active baseline. We go to eighth notes. 
And again, we have the very slight phasing with the two channels. Yep, two. And, and then it repeats again. The pedal tone in this melodic sequence just strongly recalls actual pipe organ to me. I think it's really well done. Hmm. Yeah. It's also, I mean, it's lower than we've generally scored the triangle channel in this channel game, so I think it stands out nicely. I agree. All right, so during my practice run, this chapter took me like 40 minutes to do. It's not going to take me 40 minutes now. That's why I practice. <laughs> but oh my god, what bullshit this level is. Yeah, it's level 3. Makes everything else look fair. All right. So this is the first room where it's like, hey, wait, why is the scary music playing? I know how to do this. Oh. And here's why. Good to you. Make your way across. As soon as you touch this one, you're screwed. Ah, shirts. <laughs> yep. Bold going for the hearts. I need it. <laughs> and this is the bold thing. Look at this. Yep. Yeah, this level just throws a lot at you. Yeah, it's like officially the kid gloves are off. And we're like, oh, okay, we're good. Yeah, okay, the level can start now. Alright, now I've got the long range weapon as long as I don't take another hit. Oh, random bullshit again. <laughs> What is the bowling ball gonna boss theme? <laughs> when we were blazing through there. <laughs> this is the room that killed me like for 10 minutes during my practice run. <laughs> there you go. That's how it's done. There you go. You get them to like follow each other. That's smart. Start typing random words in there. Alright, now we just have to start. 
I don't like taking those hits there, but like, you just have to accept them. So the pink bowling ball deal is going to turn around. <laughs> I think it would be really cool, like it's a cool arrangement, but in the context, this is absurd. <laughs> now the triangle channel comes in. This is called Americola, the sinking ship. I'm sure it is. <laughs> okay. So, so what's neat about that theme? What is what is that song, everybody? Right, country. It's got either a British, like colonial connotation, which is or bad for the concept game. of violence like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting rid of it, and also, yeah, America. I think that's a very clever moment. The Peter the Parrot, how I was pointing out that the bass line was very exciting to me because suddenly we weren't arpeggiating. It steals the rhythm from this. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Yep. That's the rhythm that the bass line ends up taking in Peter the Parrot. So, but typically, we're very concise in this game where I'm using boom, 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 boom. <laughs> this one's popular. There's a couple others. It's also why I was able to transcribe almost, almost the entire NES game in pretty much a day. I a couple It 
Okay. There's something about the phasing in this game. I've noticed it in so many other NES games, but never to the extent where it was so unsettling. <laughs> this game uses it really well. Yeah. This is my favorite dungeon in the game, by the way, because of this orange thing. It lets you jump two squares, which completely changes the whole context of the game immediately. It's awesome. Double damage now, so like you don't care. Yeah. Ah. I like that the AI doesn't make all of your jumps too. You know what I mean? You don't have to recalculate everything. Like, if there's only one space to jump, you jump one space. Right. Part of me likes that, part of me doesn't like it. I have no about it. So it you know. I mean, not that it would be that hard to learn if all of the jumps were now two and they spaced them in such a way that you had to kind of figure that out, but... Right. <laughs> That's tough. So many that is some leaps of faith right there. <laughs> you don't know what's coming. I, w I would guess that most people aren't collecting that one. I like how there's the baby snail, the room before to just like warn you. <laughs> this is what the boss is gonna be like. Yeah. Well, you've essentially fought this boss once before, right? The octopus? Yeah, the octopus is great. That's just halfway here, I know, that's so sad. It's a fake out. You even get the victory music, you're like, yes! <laughs> if it immediately switched back to the cave, the dungeon music, then it'd be like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, they really just, like, rub it in your face that you are not done. This is the only room in the game you have to leave the room the shadows only in the moment. Oh, more American than karate kicks, right? <laughs> With cleats. Right. Yeah, it's the magic cleats that allow you to do it. <laughs> I love, like, what is that supposed to be? Like, a little crown that you put on your head? Uh, the manual calls it an amulet. It's definitely, like, like Hermes, right? The the wing. I think it's like Hermes' ankle bracelet, yeah. Yeah. And that fits aesthetically with like the ability to traverse greater distances as well. Yeah. Oh, it's a good sound too. The yeah. It is a good sound. <laughs> Delightful. Alright, boss time. <laughs> he's an Easter Island head! <laughs> <laughs> yep. And he's only beatable by filling his mouth with baseballs. Only the baseballs will hurt him at all. Wow. Remember Mike's pitcher, baseballs. This should work. 
If you run out, they're, by the way, you're not going to got a lot of space. I mean, obviously baseball because he's a pitcher, but don't those look like basketballs? Yeah. A little bit. No, no, they're baseballs. They're, they're drawn like baseballs. Except I know, but orange. they're... they're... <laughs> But like Very the confusing. curves of the of the lines on them are correct for okay. baseballs. I know. But yeah, the orange things. Eh, I'm not feeling it. The old leather pumpkin. <laughs> right. As Liz Lemon would call it. Alright, there's a whole maze to get a heart container, but it turns out if you skip them, they just give them to you at the end of the chapter, so that's what we're gonna do. Cool. Notice how it looks like a bowling ball. Okay. I say it as if that is actually like a leading story point. It's not. <laughs> 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 the spots be something else. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, away we go. Oh right. I told myself I would remember, and I forgot. This dungeon's just BS. Uh, you don't go up in the start. This is the only dungeon. If you go to the right, the camera will pan with you. being, uh, the movement is very awkward because you have to, like, turn and then walk. But then you look at stuff like this, and <laughs> it's just so well put together. Oh, wait, I don't have to go that way. The, uh, the game makes really good use of the split stars mechanically in this level. I think the second game actually fixes the movement issues a lot. It does. It does. Although most people <laughs> will tell you the second game is better. I, I totally don't agree, but <laughs> but movement-wise, yeah, it is. And that isn't just like blobfish. I enjoy that guy a lot. Bubbles are from. <laughs> he looks like well. an anglerfish. If you touch it, you can't. Mm, yeah. Fight. He's missing his little things, but looks like an anglerfish. <laughs> game is so nice that way. Then we get this, like, kind of, like, ink and idol box. Yeah. Yeah. Mini, mini box. Yeah. I like that yeah, the I... imprint, by the way, shows up. It's like the foot clan. I always, yeah, I used, I used to really battle that an so... Say that you know they, as I don't, as I say that I like this one better than the sequel. I had the, I had access to both, so it isn't just like this is the one I grew up with. And I love it more, and I'm also not necessarily uh, anti in general because I always loved Back to the Future 2 as a kid. 
I think that the second game is better mechanically, there's no way around it. Uh, but somehow this game manages to be more charming most of the time. It's so good. It's great music. Uh, I will say, the second game's final level is a purposeful revisit to this first game's first level, and the remix of that music is fantastic. Good moment. Also, I can't think of another franchise that remixes its own music on the same system. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes in the same game, we'll see like the theme come back, but yeah, you're right. Medicine for you gotta have the stuff. Not the yo yo. That's better. Oh! But we didn't fight a big boss. Oh, weird. We just fought more of those, like, ink and idols. A bunch of the small ones, yeah. This game is full of fake out. Is Cyclops? This is... Uh, yes, they are. Here's the shooting star again. Now, the idea is that the game wants to get you to move, so you can get both at once. As long as you keep your cool and throw. This time your jumps. Yep. Okay, controller, don't buy a jump on me in this game. That's yeah. not at all how I used to. Play. Just be like, ah, freak out. <laughs> there are a lot of old school games where if you keep your cool, it's far simpler. Yeah, I'd agree. Or if you just do it, like, without thinking about it. Uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 is like that. Every single obstacle in Donkey Kong Country 2, like a rotating barrel or whatever, if you go at your first opportunity, it will work 100% of the time. One more chapter. We're gonna be like, right on time budget. Ooh. It feels good to like finish a game and then put it aside after <laughs> weeks and weeks and weeks of the same thing. Hey there. <laughs> New theme. It's me. I'm oh no. Random guy. I was thinking this was gonna be the Doctor J <laughs> theme. It is right here. There it is. I like that the bass straightens out and unsyncopates itself, but the melody is still like really hip and cool. <laughs> this is like a Coca Cola commercial. That to stretch a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very commercial y to me. Maybe American commercial. Maybe McDonald's? Something like that? Maybe like, I'm loving it! <laughs> like the holiday. Yeah, has that tag! Yeah. This sure is one of those annoying situations I complained about last week. <laughs> yeah. The button. He keeps talking forever. You're doomed. What are you supposed to be? Like 10? <laughs> no, you're a high school pitcher, so. Oh, okay. Oh, high school. Well, okay. He just looks so tiny. So, <laughs> I think you're probably 14 or 15. Because you're still a teenager in the sequel, which obviously happens at some point in the future. Yeah. So, let's say 15 now and 17 in the second game. He's like wearing, like, a jean jacket, a cooler jacket. Yeah. And trying to look hip in the second game. Looks like Marty McFly in the second one. <laughs> but not in a good way. Because it is <laughs> out like years after Back to the Future. No, I want to talk about this dungeon track for just a right. second. This melody is different, finally. But it's obviously derivative of the normal combat theme. Dun 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 dun. 
now we come down instead of go up. Okay, so... You know, dun 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 Exactly. Come down instead. Well, typically it's the same rhythm as the dungeon theme we've had before. Yep. Mm. But we do have the C section. The part. Yeah, and that's where it finally it goes up. Oh, <laughs> that tuning is lovely. Yeah. I know it's supposed to sound like it's in, you know, metallic and stuff, but... And again, <laughs> that is not a single channel pulse. Pulse 1 and 2 were in, in this one. You might be able to hear it a little bit when there's a lot of sound effects happening. Um, it's purely that there's two different timbres happening. Yeah. That doesn't make it any less annoying. I'm kind of a joke. No. <laughs> I think, like, the if it just didn't have sustain notes, it'd be fine. But, like, that sustain is, like... It's only the pulse 2 that's the sustaining quite the same. Yeah. Yeah, when there's a lot of sound effects, you can hear Pulse 2 drop out, and a lot of that sustain goes away. Right. Now we get a gun. You were asking, Julianne, when the gun There we go. Now we so get America. We got a shooty pistol. We can go pew pew. We can. Oh, I like how instead of water now, we have, like, ships that'll electrocute you. <laughs> Is that the, the idea? Circuitry is scary. Yeah. I can keep hearing the little triplet thing at the end. <laughs> that was my worst run yet. <laughs> oh my god, you know what rhythm that is? What? I'm gonna find it, hold on. <laughs> Sort of sounds like the invincibility theme from um, 
Oh yeah, that was Mario. Mario. In like a weird inverted terribleness. Yeah, but I don't think that could be the reference we're <laughs> because right away it's gonna give me upgrades to those three hearts. Yeah, I see. Oh, and I took a hit anyway. Okay. Well, so much for that idea. It's <laughs> a good idea. Okay, next time we get into a boss fight, <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> the next boss fight is time sensitive, Dana. I can't really stop much. It's okay. <laughs> Do we have any other bosses that use the game? Zoda uses it in the next boss fight. We can do that. There's dialogue. Just the very next boss, I have to just cast her on the spot. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Oh, wait, it's this one. This is the one you can't stop on, right? I can take a minute here. I'll just jump around. Save these. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I don't know if it'll play through the stuff. It's totally the We Like to Party Six Flags theme song. Oh, the, um... The, the, the Banga Boys song? <laughs> no, I hate you. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize how nice it was to not have that song in my head. For so long, for years. Uh, <laughs> now it's okay. back. <laughs> I'm always gonna hear it that way now, and I hate it forever. <laughs> it's not <laughs> exact. It's not exact. You can all listen to this track. The other one that I ruined for a heck of a lot of people is the stable theme in Breath of the Wild. I pointed out at Nexagum on Twitter that it reminded me of a whole new world. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh god! <laughs> this maze, by the way, sucks. <laughs> There's one more level, by the way, and then we'll be at the end of the game. We are almost done. Oh. I wonder what the longest NES game is. Like the game that the NES game that takes the longest to complete. Because mm. like this took me like multiple weeks as a kid, right? We're going through it in two hours. <laughs> any music would be closer to like an hour 15, hour 20. I don't oh, know, there are still some Nintendo games for when I was a kid that I haven't beaten yet, so. <laughs> so, decades. <laughs> decades. One day, one day I will figure some of them out, but. <laughs> I wonder what the longest game is, like, if mechanically there's no limitations. Like, if we're like speedrunners all of a sudden. Oh, so what I want to note in this theme... Oh, is it gonna go away? Nope, I'll leave it. Okay. We start in G minor. Yeah. And we, we have a major right here, right? Really cool. <laughs> We're back in the G minor. I love that. that it's like it's a little... <laughs> I don't know a lot of games that do a lot of mode shifting, so that really stands out to me. Mm -hmm. All right, well, or I should say NES games that do that in a single track like that. Mm. Especially to the what? I love those graphics right there. It's like Raid on Bungling Bay, end of the Atari era. That sound reminded me of Wiley's like little floaty shits. Just a little bit. I expect like his little eyebrows <laughs> to pop out. Ooh. 
Wow. Well, hello. An evil plane. <laughs> the prime invader. There's a comma. Argonians! Oh. You jam bananas in your ear! <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because earlier in the game someone asks you, like, do you have bananas in your ears? So huh. it's a nice callback to earlier. <laughs> he shoots the eyeballs. Obviously. That's right. Shooting eyeballs. They look kind of like like baked apples. <laughs> 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 Maybe they're not eyeballs at all. Maybe Very not. American. Well, and it's interesting. We've had so many like Americola, Sheepola. Check it out. You see him his true form retreating. Ew. Neat! I have to get to that hill before he shoots me. Okay. Wait, we're winning that hill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna point out, so we've had cola all along, and then the final boss is, is soda, which sounds like soda. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. The Z makes it sound spacey. I like the implied platforming here. You gonna get more of the things? I just wanted the gun and the medicine. Oh, uh, that one. Okay. <laughs> I was like, there's, there's the one down there. It doesn't yeah, hurt to have more shots. That's a maximum one, too. It's 99. Yeah. Three medicines and the super gun. Because now you can just redo the short section and get back to the top. <laughs> It's cool how it looks like an engine, but it's also kind of like a part of the ship. Yes. Nice! This screen, now that it's all shattered, looks very contrast to me now that we're, we're fighting an alien now. Like... Yeah. Mm. And these coral monsters. larva monster thing. It's very contrast. Yeah. We're back to a regular boss name. Oh, hey, we saw him. 
So if you didn't stick behind on the other screen, you'd be like, who's this? Oh. Oh my god. Oh. I thought that I could jump past it. Nope. <laughs> uh, did I do the whole thing? Oh, uh, no. Yes, okay. Well. Oh my god. <laughs> Number two saves. Here. I'll save next time. This actually goes pretty quick. That claw is an instant kill, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. That was a demonstration of the instant kill. It was totally on purpose. Yeah, thanks, Dana. What really annoys me is if I wouldn't have died, we'd be on time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe throw a save in here somewhere. Uh, yeah. When I get to the. Actually, we'll save right here so I can make sure I keep super. I really like all the movies on Twitch. <laughs> well played.
opinion, it's better to keep him on the jumpy thing. Than try to fight him in the open ground. I think that's fair. I like that metric, I mean it's just triplets, but the whole like metric disorientation at the end of the loop. Yeah. Yes. And it's what like, very common in NES tracks, I think. And, and what it's a short loop. That is I've only, uh, like, seen other left players do it. Okay. It's a good one, though. Alert, alert! Hmm. You got flash magic cube! You shout, I've got it! <laughs> <laughs> Happening. The spaceship is blowing up. Oh. Oh, that's you. <laughs> Just like, see ya. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> escape pod? I feel like the escape pod was a good choice, Mike. Like, for figuring out <laughs> what to do. <laughs> I'm flailing. I Aww. love that the game over music plays there. Well, yeah, because you drowned. But don't worry, you made friends with a dolphin earlier. He's paying you back. Yay. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dolphin friend. So, in a rarity for this genre of game, I have full control right now. Talk to all the townspeople, and they all have different cool hmm. things to say to you now. That's nice. Hmm. <laughs> Clean. Yo yo instead of learn how to throw a baseball. Yeah. <laughs> Looks totally cool. Except for those bananas. Remember, he put bananas in his Are ears. Still in his ears? Right. Here's Babu, the assistant. Oh, they're gonna celebrate with cola. Cola? cola? It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Cola. Nice. Cola never. That takes forever, my God. I know. Cola never does that for me. <laughs> right. They're gonna roast a pig for the victory party. Oh, that's the, that's why the pig snubs you earlier. That's right. <laughs> you because did. initially it's oh. your welcome party before your uncle disappears. Right, because the villagers and aren't so told that yet. Yeah. I love how this guy <laughs> jokes with you. Ha ha! I'm just <laughs> kidding you, Mike. <laughs> Whatever, I always thought that was a good joke. <laughs> There's Uncle Steve. What have you done with the chief? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, everyone's congratulating you. Okay. 
it's... Hey, get that Wait, baguette. I have to like hold my arm to do it. I'm not, I'm gonna be living that down for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Form. Where's the fourth one? That's under the top one. <laughs> okay, now. It's a cool theme here. It is a cool theme. Okay. All right. Stop and listen to this one. Just for it's a short loop. Yep. Islands. This is the other track that's messed up, right? <laughs> this track still works, though, and the average person isn't going to leave this track yes. on long enough for it to loop poorly. It doesn't loop poorly. It's totally different than that. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so if we go back Is there a to... channel I'm missing? Yeah, we're missing a channel. So in this one, there is a triangle channel written. It works perfectly well with just the two false channels. The triangle channel was corrupted because there's an extra zero byte on the end of the setup data. So there's a random weird node in the middle uh, of this one, <laughs> just like in that overworld track. But the real bass line never sounds at all, unlike the in the original one, which was too much space. This was just an, an error in coding. So there's this beautiful, low, s sweeping bass line. Do you have a, and if we... Oh, spend... it, you just hear it briefly, it goes, Wah, and then it cuts out again. Yeah. Do you have a timestamp yeah. on that video from earlier? Ah! Let me find it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to progress some dialogue while you do that. Three oh five. Three oh five. While I was this poking around in there, I also noticed this track from the end of the game. It sounds complete enough as it is, even though it doesn't have a bass line, but then I heard this curious little note come from the bass. When I took a look at the data for that track, I found there was a full bass line written for it, and it had just been accidentally corrupted. There was an extra zero byte on the end of the setup data, and after deleting that, I got to hear for the first time this track in full three-part harmony. curious to me because the first problem suggests that the right. composer was using... yeah, well, that's really cool i don't know that if i actually really cool. like like it with the bass line part of it is i'm so used to it without it people go back it works beautifully both ways i feel like without it it emphasizes the fact that they're all orphans now right like with no home because uh, they're not that? grounded right it also has a, like an innocent sound to it that fits the fact that they're all children. Right. It just sounds like Dragon Warrior. Yeah, I agree with that as well. It's totally like that. I don't know. I take them. I take them both as equally. I when I first heard that one, I was really like, "Whoa, that is something." <laughs> that is really cool. Uh, so in addition to, um, on that video, he has a link to the corrected NSF file, uh, so you can, and then he also has a way that you can insert it into your game if you want to play it with the corrected tracks. Mm. Nice. That's cool. That is cool. <coughs> I love that there are bananas on her alien planet. 
<laughs> but, ooh, banana cream pie. She can hang out with Bananette. That's right. This track feels like the end of a Konami game to me. It's such an active baseline. Yep. Instead of that syncopated baseline that we've had so many other places. And the fact that we keep zooming out further and further, I love that. It's all, I've always thought that we're zooming out to, like, the aliens' eventual home place. Hmm. <laughs> Yay! Now we get, like, this Zelda symbol here, I love this. This is the same font as hmm. the Zelda credits, too. <laughs> yeah. There weren't that many on the NES, to be fair. <laughs> That's true, this is like common into the rest <laughs> font, but still. It's interesting, uh, Yoshi Hirai on here is, is tagged as a musician. I think that's kind of neat. It's not sound design, it's- oh, and then we get the, these beautiful, uh, anime- art of the- all the different boss fights in a row. Hmm. Yeah, all the different stuff you did. Yep, made this, yeah. <laughs> I love pixel art, by the way. I think it's fantastic. That's a good one. Like having the CRT filter set up correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there a weird aura around her at that point? Him, that I don't know. <laughs> That's basically the same screen. They just added him in looking That's derby. Right, they just added <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where are his eyes? Oh, I like how the whale has a uvula. <laughs> uvula. <laughs> oh, now they tell me. <laughs> <I'm okay>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What's he doing with his lips there? He's like <laughs> puckering. Yeah. Oh, it's Raiders. <laughs> Sane mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. That's a nice touch doing the retard at the end. It's cute. That blue Nintendo logo, by the way, is not familiar to North American audiences, but that's how the Famicom logo is displayed uh, upon a Famicom cartridge startup. Fun but fact! But this is the only time that North American audiences ever see it that way. Hmm. If they stay to the end of the credits. <laughs> How can you not wait for the end of that song, though? It's got, like, a really nice retard that most songs on this system don't have, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but it loops, so I don't know. Maybe somebody somebody's like, oh, there's just pictures. <laughs> you know? I, I can see where somebody might have missed it. Whatever, those people don't go on to become ludomusicologists. <laughs> well, uh, Ryan, 
I think we need to close out the stream by playing the Six Flags song. Uh, <laughs> that, that there, really uh, right above, oh my god, and no. <laughs> I'm not sure that we can do that, Dana. I feel like... Ah! <laughs> it's exactly the rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, after our next set of stuff, maybe we'll do Star Tropics 2, and I'll let you do it then. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that one has any uh, of that rhythm, so, you know, I haven't done any transcriptions of that game. No, I haven't either. I don't know. I think it's musically much more varied, actually. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be like the Because it's a time travel, right? So you have to get, like, BS London, BS Renaissance, BS Egypt, right? Like, <laughs> I love it. Which is fun. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. Yep, we'll see everybody <laughs> next week, hopefully for Metroid Zero Mission, and uh, hopefully with uh, special guest. We'll see. We will see. All right. Bye for now, everybody. Bye, folks. Bye.